is a TARDEC program uh, called BTI. There are people from TARDEC here in the crowd. I saw Joe Erda earlier. He could give you lots of detail about this. But this uses a pair of strikers, 18-ton um, platforms. And this loop that was used down at Fort Gordon for testing, the blue areas represent where, where, where the guys had GPS coverage at the beginning of the mission. And as the mission progressed, you see that, that the GPS coverage is dramatically reduced. This is just due to the shifting constellation of the satellites and these column-like eff effects from the local uh, trees and topography. So in this instance, you've got a manned leader with its own radar. It's looking for uh, the road, and it's also looking for major features near the road, which it sends as reference points to the follower. The follower can, can use the GPS INS data that's on the vehicle. It's being sent back to the follower in real time, and does do that in real time. Although the LADAR is running, in this instance, for obstacle detection capability, in case something intervenes between the time the leader goes through and the follower goes through. But in addition, when the, when the GPS uh, capability is not functioning, um, the registration data, as we call it, that the vehicles uh, use to detect, determine where the lead vehicle was, that, those registration points are passed to the follower, and without GPS, the vehicle can still maintain very precise uh, location you know, within inches of the original path the leader took without access to GPS. So in this instance, this gate is going to close as an instance of a change that occurred in the environment since the leader went through. If you were just blindly following waypoints, you'd hit the gate. But in fact, the vehicle does a swerve around the gate and avoids it. Uh, there's another shot here where you can see it from, more from the, the rear. And you can see, also see the vehicles are moving at a pretty good clip here. They're not, not uh, absolutely up to the highest tactical op tempo, but they're, this, was, this is within the realm of normal operational speeds. They're always working to push those speeds higher. Uh, one of the earlier field tests of ANS this took place, and again, in a convoy mode, uh, but in this instance, the lead vehicle is autonomous, and the follower is following in a convoy mode. Uh, a moment here, you'll see. This is the shot through the windscreen of the lead vehicle. This takes place at Fort Bliss, and as you'll see, uh, dust is a major problem at Bliss. These are obstacles that have been set up ahead of the bot. You can see them. And this is a tactical truck that has one of the working generations of ANS uh, located on it. And you see the big cloud of dust that appears uh, behind the vehicle as it approaches the obstacle field. And again, with ANS, the speeds are higher uh, than they were with the earlier tech-based systems. The, the LADAR can see further, and it's just generally a more a more mature uh, system. In a moment, the scene shifts to a, a following mode of operation. And if you look over here, here's the follower. So he's contending with a lot of dust generated by the leader. Mm -hmm. And uh, if he was actually hugging the tail of this vehicle, the dust cloud would be too dense for the radar to, uh, to penetrate it. And I doubt that the FLIR would penetrate it. But in this instance, he's hanging back a little bit, so the dust is a little bit less dense. But certainly uh, not an environment where our tech-based systems would have, would have been able to function. This is, again, a feature of the more capable, uh, real system-oriented components in AMS. You can see the vehicles are operating a good bit more quickly in that. In the last video, 